Hey team, Patrick here. Part two to our lesson on singles tactics, where I want to look at where to aim and specific patterns we can use to help us win our next match. So let's get into it. And I first want to cover where we're going to hit. And we're simply going to play what we call high percentage tennis. Now, I think for a lot of players, this comes with negative connotations about being non-offensive and passive, and this just isn't the case. And it means literally that we're going to select the shot that gives us the highest probability of winning the point. And if I was to say to you that one shot you would win seven out of 10 points and the other shot you would win three out of 10 points, well, you'd be crazy not to pick the seven out of 10 option every time. And in terms of the direction, I've got two choices. I can go down the line or I can go cross court. And the cross court is going to be the higher percentage shot. One, the net is lower in the middle. It's six inches lower. The court is longer. It's actually four and a half feet longer if we measure it cross court versus down the line. I think I said in a, uh, in a previous video, it was, uh, it was three and a half feet longer. We've actually got even more uh, court space to, uh, to play into. The, uh, the timing of a down the line ball is more difficult. We're going to have to be uh, more precise. If my intention is to go cross court and hit out here, and I'm late with my contact, which is the more, uh, the more common mistake that I see, by the way, well, the ball's just going to go down the line. But if I attempt to go down the line and I'm late, well, you can see the ball is now going to fly off out in this direction here. Going back to our, uh, our positioning, if I go down the line, well, I've got to get all the way over to here. I've got to recover to here to cover their next cross court shot. So I'm on the wrong side of the court if I go down the line. So my strategy for singles is going to be to play cross court on every ball unless the ball falls into a specific category. And depending on your level, I'm, uh, I'm prepared to bet that if you, uh, if you just follow this pattern in your, uh, if you're in your next match, if you just follow this pattern of going cross court on every ball, you'd probably do a lot better than you, uh, than you think or, uh, or expect. But of course, we do want to be able to play down the line in certain circumstances. And that is if your opponent's ball falls into the category of what I call one of the three S's. And that is that either the ball is short, the ball is particularly slow, or you have a ton of space to head into. If you go down the line, just for the sake of it, and you don't hurt your opponent, will you just allow them to immediately take control of the point. It's why the, uh, the pros often look like they're just hitting the ball back to each other. They're hitting the ball back and forth, but, but they know if they go down the line, they have to be very selective. They have to be careful when they go down the line. Otherwise, they just put themselves on the back foot and they have to do more running. So, Recapping uh, this, going back to this, it was, uh, it was slow, it was short, or if we got a ton of space. So if you see that your, uh, your opponent hasn't recovered to this position, they haven't got back to this position where they're just off center, well, now you can go down the line, you can put them under pressure, you can hurt them with your direction. If the ball is slow, well, now that timing that we talked about earlier isn't as much of an issue. If it kind of sits up in your contact zone here, rather than shooting through your contact zone, where well, you can step up to it and you can attack. And the same if the ball is short, 
Well, now you can attack it and you can follow the ball into the net where you're going to want to position yourself on the same side of the court as the ball anyway. And we'll talk about sort of positioning up at the, uh, the net in singles in a future video. So drills to, uh, to practice this. The first exercise is going to be in a, uh, in a point situation. You're going to play cross court only. So for example, on the juice side here, the tram lines are out. Remember, we're playing singles and I'm going to recover to just off center here. Again, keeping it realistic for singles, but we can only play cross court. The progression is going to be now to set up a, a specific pattern. And this was sort of a, a real sort of favorite of, a, uh, of mine and uh, a friend of mine sort of growing up as juniors and at university. And the exercise is called two cross, one line. So one player is going to play two shots cross court and the third ball is going to go down the line. And then you're going to play the points out using the full singles court after that. I like the two shots cross court before going down the line because it's more realistic. We're going to play more shots, if you remember, cross court, and it allows me to create that space. I can, I can push them deep, I can push them wide, and then I can attack the third ball down the line. This is going to be a, a drill you often see uh, practiced by the pros, and I saw Dan Evans doing this exact same exercise when he was, uh, he was practicing at our courts during the, uh, during the Nottingham Open. The final exercise, so we've kind of, uh, we've put in sort of the shot sort of after, we went sort of cross court and then put in the, uh, the down the line ball, is gonna be to add in some decision making. So now I feed the ball in cross court and either player can go down the line at any time based on the three S's. Right guys, now you've got a, a very specific tactical game plan that you can use the next time you step out on the singles match court. And this is what one of my lessons calls playing tennis by numbers. So I hope this has helped. If it has, please leave the video a like, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on court in the next one. Cheers guys.